Hello and welcome to Modern GUIs in Unity 4.6. My name is Nelson Lequet, and in this series, we are going to be taking a look at the new GUI system. So if you guys have been working with Unity for a while, you probably started to get pretty fed up of the old Immediate Mode UI. Now, Immediate Mode UI used to be all the rage a while ago. Um, and when I say a while ago, quite a few years ago. Um, it was really this really cool idea to be able to write your GUI and code, and it was so simple and straightforward, but it's not so great for a lot of reasons. It's not so great for building complex interactions with, for, with the user through the UI. It's not so great when doing animations. It's not so great when we have a designer who doesn't know how to code who wants to make a UI. So Unity recognized this, and they recognized this quite a few years ago and have been promising us a new UI system for a decent amount of time. Well, it's finally here, mostly. Um, you're going to be able to gain access to the new Unity UI by downloading the 4.6 beta as it stands right now. However, uh, all you guys are in the future, and uh, since you're in the future, you probably might already have access to 4.6 or 5.0. Any of those products will work fine with what we're about to show. Now, fortunately for us, the UI is actually pretty stable. I haven't ran into a lot of issues, and the issues that I have ran into, I've, I've just outlined in this video series, and uh, they're very few and far between. So don't worry a whole lot about any sort of crashes. I've ran into a few rendering bugs here and there in the scene view that disappear when I hit play. I've also ran into one time I was working with an auto layout group and it wouldn't work until I restarted the editor. But basically, for a beta, that's not that bad, especially considering how new the GUI system is and how it hasn't really been in our hands, well, since now. So, in this video series, we're going to talk a lot about the GUI system. We're going to talk mainly about, in the first part, we're going to talk mainly about the, uh, the core concepts. Now the GUI system is the system that's designed around a very few core concepts. Uh, things like the rect transform and that include your anchors and your pivots. And these core concepts have been carefully thought out by the Unity developers to make sure that a variety of different UIs are available for creation. So we won't run into a limitation saying, oh we can't do this because you know we can't anchor in that position. Unity guys thought a lot about it. And I think they did a pretty good job at coming up with a very good baseline. The whole concept with the canvas and the whole concept with our different renders and our rec transforms and our all that stuff is a very, very good baseline that we can use to construct more complex user interfaces out of. Now, I'm pretty sure that the UI is going to be a little bit different for you guys in the future who are using the final release of 4.6. I have a feeling that Unity is going to include some pre-made widgets and things like maybe tab controls or menu controllers or maybe different um, sprites bundled in default. I, I, I just have a feeling that's going to happen. But the good news is, is that doesn't invalidate a single thing in this series. And here's why. The whole GUI system, like I said previously, is based around some core concepts. Once you understand those core concepts, you are good to go. You can pretty much create whatever you want. Um, so as we'll see, we can get away with creating a lot of different effects with very, very little code. So this series is broken to two parts. The first part, which will be released for free, or is released for free, uh, since you guys are watching this in the future. It's really hard to think like that. Kind of kind of messes up my brain a little bit. But um, first part will be free, and we'll talk about the basic core tenets of the UI system. We're going to get all the basic stuff out of the way. We're going to talk, talk very in depth about the rec transform and anchors and pivots. Uh, we're going to talk about things like selectables and buttons and text and sliders and all that fun stuff. Then we're also going to work a lot with animations. We're going to see how the animation system can integrate with the UI system. And then finally, at the end of part one, we're going to bring all that stuff together and build the menu system that you see in front of you right Right now. So you'll see that um, I can come here and I can hit something like high scores and I see a high scores window come in. Or I could click on options and I see an options window come in. You'll notice that they all have these really nice transitions. They have these, these really fluid animations that are all customizable in the animation editor to your liking. 
Now that's in a very, very important aspect because the most exciting thing about this menu system isn't that it works as well as it does with a very, very small amount of code. Uh, it has two scripts, they're very small, but that you can give this scene to your designer and he can sit here, he, as long as he understands the GUI system, he can sit there and make it look like however he wants without even touching the code. Let's see what that looks like. If I go ahead and hit uh, uncheck hit play and I go into the scene view, look what we see here. We see all of our menus and they're all just sitting out here in the, the, the void of uh, the space. Basically, the way that I have approached working with this UI system is a massive emphasis on what you see is what you get editing. So what I mean by that is when I have panels that are going to be shown and hidden, I like to make sure that those panels are still visible in the scene editor so I can edit them without tweaking other values or enable a game object or disabling a game object. You'll see what happens when I hit play. If I jump back into the scene view, you'll see that they disappeared. They actually oriented themselves back into the center of the screen. So you won't have to worry because somebody might be saying, oh, well, your, your, your panels are over there in the thing. If the resolution of the screen changes, then, you know, people will be able to see those panels floating there. Well, they won't because I reorient them into the center once the game starts. But you will definitely see throughout this series, and especially in part two, we are going to make a, put a very large emphasis on designer friendly, what you see is what you get editing. So again, uh, the first part, we were going to talk about the core tenants, we we're going to talk about how anchors and pivoting works, selectables, uh, how navigation works between elements, how animation works, how we can create a menu system with a few lines of code. And when I say a few lines of code, I mean it. I mean, look at this, we have our menu script, which looks like that. And then we have our menu manager, which looks like that. I and mean, that's all the code that we have. With, with that little code, we have a very extensible main menu system that you guys could use in your own projects without any issue and that it all works using the animation system and the GUI system and all that fun stuff so it all comes together very nicely. So that's going to be the first part and that's all going to be released for free because I think it's really important that everybody understands how to use this UI like it like it's intended to be used. Remember this UI has a massive emphasis on editing the UI in the editor and being able to edit the UI in the editor might be a little challenging for people who um, are unfamiliar with this system. So I really want to show you guys how to kind of think outside the box and make sure that your scenes are designer friendly. Even if you're a designer watching this right now and you're not interested in code, that's fine. I mean, this would be a great introduction for, for somebody who doesn't want to look at a lot of code because we don't look at a lot of code. Um, if you're a developer, even if you're a developer, who is also a designer. Well, guess what? You're still going to have to design your UIs. Would you rather do that in a massive 700 million line long on GUI function? Or do you want to do that using the tools that Unity has just released? Anyway, so um, I hope you guys enjoy part one. Uh, part one is uh, really fun to put together. I, I'm in love with this new system. Uh, let's talk a little bit about part two. And, and you can go ahead and uh, grab, get your hands on part two by heading over to uh, 3dbuzz.com. Before I show you guys the project, however, I do want to point something out. Now, part one is not very code heavy. In fact, even if you're not a developer, even if you don't even know C Sharp, I still encourage you to go through it. The amount of code is so trivial that, uh, that it just doesn't matter. However, part two will be code heavy. Uh, code heavy in the sense that we still need to describe our game logic somehow. How do we describe the game logic? Well, we describe game logic through code. We'll be using C Sharp to do that. I recommend a beginner to intermediate level of understanding of C-sharp. Now we're not going to go through things like what a class is or what a function is, um, and whenever I pop in something that might be a little bit beyond um, what a beginner to intermediate developer would know, I make special note of it and talk about exactly what I'm doing. So don't be afraid of the code if you're at a beginner to inter intermediate level, but don't expect a tutorial in C-sharp either. Now, if you head on over to 3dbuzz.com, there are plenty of free C Sharp resources that you can go through to kind of get up to speed with how to use C Sharp, at least enough of it to understand what's going on in the game. But just remember, part two will require some code. Part one doesn't really. Part one is perfectly designer friendly. Uh, anybody can go through it. Um, again, part two will have 
a decent amount of C-sharp in it. But that's exactly what part two is all about. Just remember, part two is showing you guys how to take all of this stuff and actually make it into a game, how to see the game's from start to finish, how to see how I um, organized everything and put everything together and made sure I didn't sacrifice the designability, which is a word I just invented, by the way. Um, I said it first. Uh, designability of the UI from within the editor. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that project. And um, I'm just going to open up the project right here. So this is the project. Uh, the scene, the game scene, where our game is contained. And you'll notice that I have a similar thing where I have the win screen and the lose screen and the options menu kind of sitting outside in this, the screen space so that I can edit it while I'm in design mode. So what is this? What are we going to do in part two? Well, we're going to put together a memory matching game. And we're going to do it entirely with the GUI system. What do I mean? I mean every single visual aspect of this game is going to be rendered with the GUI. Now you might, if you're familiar with Unity's old immediate mode GUI, you might be going, wow, that's a terrible idea. GUI sucks. Well, this one doesn't. Meaning I can get away with making a very compelling, very easy to use game user interface with just using the UI without sacrificing any, any flexibility, really at all. In fact, I gained flexibility. Because, I mean, really, you're not just limited to using what you can get in the designer. As you'll see in part two, you can actually extend the whole UI system for things like auto layouts. And that allows you to really express anything that you want. Can't do it in the GUI system as it stands? Write a C-sharp file, plug into the extensible UI, and then drop it as a component. You can see an example with that with our game board. This game board has these tiles, and they're all positioned through code. And what's cool about that is they're positioned through code, but we're seeing it in the editor. So how does that happen? How does Unity facilitate that? Well, you're, you guys are going to learn how to do this in part two, and it's going to be, um, it's going to be awesome. But anyway, so we have our game, and you see all these elements. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what this game actually does. So you'll see it starts off with this really basic interface. Uh, the game board disappears, no options, whatever. We can click on options. We can set our options here, like let's say tiles per row. Let's make this game easy. Go to 2-2. Two, two. I know I haven't even told you guys what this game does yet, but um, let's see here that momentarily. Then I'll hit start game. This is a basic memory matching game. So You'll notice that we have a time left. We have these tiles that we can drag here from the gutter, and we can drop them into these little slots. When we drop them into the correct slot, we get points. I, for the life of me, cannot remember what went in the next tile. So I'm just going to guess and get a bunch of negative points, because I apparently have no memory. You know, people always assume just because you made a game you're good at it. Well, that is not true at all for anything. Oh, come on, this is just embarrassing now. There we go. <laughs> I won with negative 70, 70 points, but at least I had 26.55 26 seconds left. Anyway, so this is a very simple um, uh, memory tile matching game. We can make it a little bit more interesting by upping the tiles per row to four and four and hitting start game. Now the game gets a little bit more interesting. And you'll also notice that uh, we also talk about resolution as well. In the, end of the, in the end of the series, in the last video, we actually make this phone work with mobile, user, m mobile phones, uh, working with under the constraints of a mobile device. And you'll see how to do that as well. But that's why the, the screen looks really big right now. It's really scaled up. Um, just note that that's something we added to make it friendly with, uh, with phones. If you were writing a standalone, you would put in some different settings for your resolution. But for this, looks good. Looks great on my phone, and uh, hopefully it looks great on yours too. So, uh, so yeah, that is our memory game. We construct it purely out of UI elements. You'll see we have this uh, little thing up here um, with our hierarchy with all our GUI elements, and we put them all together, and then we throw scripts on them, and we get behavior. In part two, you'll also see a really cool event-driven um, system that's just going to use normal C-sharp events to describe the state of the game so that our user interface is completely decoupled from our game logic. And that's really, really important. 
Furthermore, I really take the whole concept of what you see is what you get editing very far with this because I think it's one of the most important things that you can do when designing user interfaces. So how do I do that? Well, you'll notice that I'll have, I have multiple scenes. I have two, these two little, what I call workspaces. And I use these workspaces to test components in isolation. So like I said, in addition to talking about the UI and um, some of the features we can do with it, the emphasis of part two is really showing how we can bring it all together and how we can create complex interactions without sacrificing the ability to edit it in design mode and without alienating old designers who don't know don't want to learn how to write code but still want to do their job so yeah part two is a lots of fun so um head on over to 3dbuzz.com and uh, grab yourself a copy of that but anyway um getting back into our project itself uh, that we're going to be putting together in part one. Again, we're this is our end goal. Now, we're going to be putting together the menu as the last video. The rest of the video is going to be the prerequisites. I highly, highly encourage people to not skip those videos in the middle. Um, we will show a quick example of how to build something really fast in the next video, but keep in mind that in order to work with the UI system without getting frustrated, you must understand the rect transform and the other things that we will be describing in the fundamental lessons. Um, if you don't, you will be fighting with it. But when you do, suddenly just everything opens up. All the possibilities open up and it becomes a very, very wonderful system to work with. All right, guys, I hope you have as much fun watching these videos as I did putting them together. So let's go ahead and get started.